Today we're going to be talking about Kirchhoff's laws, which are kind of just logical things that we've already discussed a little bit, um, but we're going to explicitly talk about them today. Um, there's two laws, and we're going to evaluate a circuit using them. The first law is Kirchhoff's junction rule, which is basically just the conservation of current. It says that the current that enters a junction, a junction is where two wires meet, like right there, the current going into a junction equals current exiting a junction. And the way we will write that is current, which is I, in equals current I out. So if you look at this picture here, you see the current's going in here and out of these two things. So the current in is just I1, and that equals the current out, which is I2 and I3 added together. So basically, we're just going to use um, the junction rule to determine the relationship between some currents using conservation of current. And here's an example of how that would look. So you've got 2.5 amps of current going in to some junction, we'll say. This is the junction right here. You've got 2.5 amps going in, and you're gonna have um, some other current going out through this wire and this wire. You know, the current in equals that 2.5 amps and that has to equal the current going out which is 1.5 amps on this side plus the current through this other resistor that's the question mark we're going to call it i 200 for the current going through the 200 ohm resistor Solve for that, you just subtract 1.5 amps from each side to get that that current has to be 1 amp. And this is probably kind of intuitive to you. We've already been doing it sort of in some other questions, just using conservation of current. It's really pretty, pretty simple of an idea, but it will be super useful and you'll have to know how to do it um, from here on out. So make sure you understand what just happened here. If you don't, pause, rewind the video, figure it out. Kirchhoff's second rule is somewhat less obvious, but it's pretty intuitive once you figure out what it really means. So Kirchhoff's loop rule says that the voltage around a loop has to equal zero. And this makes sense because if you start at some point on a circuit, we'll say we start at this point, and you go around the circuit, once you end back at the same point, voltage has to be the same because the potential difference across the same point is like the voltage of A minus the voltage of A, which has to be zero. So the voltage around a loop where you go from one point back to the same point has to be zero. And we can use that to figure out how much voltage drops across lots of different things. And this is an idea that we've already been kind of implicitly using. However, as you can see here in this picture, it can be used more extensively than we've already been using it. We can extend it to cases that have multiple batteries. And the way that you work with Kirchhoff's loop rule is that for a certain loop, you define a direction that you're going to evaluate the loop in. I usually do clockwise because um, I like that. And you pick a point where you're going to start evaluating the circuit. I am going to start at the negative terminal right here and move around the circuit. It really doesn't matter which direction you go or where you start as long as you make a full loop. As we start at that point, we're going to move through a battery going from the negative to the positive terminal, which is going to give our current um, or raise our current up through a potential of 9 volts. So we have 9 volts for that. And then as we continue to travel along, we get to a resistor. Voltage drops across the resistor. How much does it drop? 
Well, we use Ohm's law to say V equals current. We don't really know current, so we're just going to do this I times R, which is 3. So in my equation up here, we'll say 9 volts minus, because we're losing potential over resistor, 3I. And we continue on around the loop. And we get to a battery. But the thing is here, we're going to go through that battery backwards from a positive to a negative terminal. So our voltage is going to drop another 6 volts because we're going backwards through that battery. And then the current's going to continue through to the other side where we ended up. So that's all of our voltage or potential difference in the whole circuit. And Kirchhoff's rule for loops says that must equal 0. And the fun thing that we can do there is we can solve for I from the um, circuit. So we'll do 6 volts minus, or 9 volts minus 6 volts, 3 volts equals 3I, so that you get your current equals 1 ampere through the whole circuit, which is not obvious when you've got um, two batteries. Side note, um, before we calculate a complicated circuit, um, this equation you will use for circuits to find power. Power equals I times delta V. You can plug Ohm's law in here, V equals I R. Um, you can solve for I and plug in for that, or you can plug in for V. This is be how you calculate power in circuits. I forgot to mention it in a past video, so I'm going to mention it here. Um, it's just an equation. Plug in current and voltage to find power. Power is measured in watts. All right, so let's evaluate this circuit right here. A little bit more complex than um, the previous ones. Now, when you are evaluating a circuit using Kirchhoff's laws, it's usually because you can't evaluate it with just series and parallel. And the reason you can't do that is because you've got two batteries here. And dealing with two batteries causes all sorts of weird, wonky crap. So I'm going to highlight those batteries for us. One battery, two batteries. So instead of evaluating it all as series and parallel, we're going to have to evaluate with Kirchhoff's laws. And the steps for that start with, um, or at least the steps that I use, start with number one, um, bolding junctions. Okay, So you want to know where those junctions are by making them nice and bold. You don't have to do it, but it's the way I do it, so it's the way I'm teaching you. After you bold the junctions in, you draw in current. And this step is really important. You have to draw current with arrows and labels. So we've got a lot of current that happens here. There is a different current flowing through each wire between two junction points. So we've got three different currents. I'm going to label them in green. First current goes from this junction to this junction through this wire. And you've got to choose arbitrarily a direction you think the current is going to go. It might not go that direction. It might go backwards. But you just pick one. It's like choosing positive and negative axes in a question. It doesn't really matter as long as you have them to refer to. So I'm going to choose my direction going this way towards the right. That's going to be my current. And I'm going to label it as current number one. But current could also flow between those two junction points going this way. I'm going to label that as current number two. Or it could go through this top part. I'm going to go up this way and around for current number three. Again, the direction I chose doesn't matter. I just have to choose one. So we've drawn in the current, and then we're going to have to draw in loops. Okay. So we've got two loops here. We've got, or well, actually, we've got three loops. We've got one little loop here. I'm going to choose this to be the direction. I'm going to call it loop one. And then we've got loop two. 
down here on the bottom. And then if you wanted to, you could say a big third loop, but it's going to end up getting absorbed in our other information. So it doesn't matter. We draw in the loops. We choose the direction we're going to evaluate them in. And we're good to go on setup. And we're going to write some equations using Kirchhoff's laws. I'm going to go ahead and scoot over here. So I've got a little bit more room to work. Okay. So the first equations I'm going to look at are going to be based off of the junction rule. Which says that current in equals current out. So if I look at um, this junction right here, this one, I know that the current going in to that junction has to be equal to the current going out of that junction. Well, there is no current going into that junction, which means one of my currents is backwards. Does that matter? Nah, not really. It'll mathematically work out the same. So we say the current going into that spot is zero. Mm, not good, not good. And that's going to equal all of the current going out. I1 plus I2 plus I3. What this actually just means is that one of those currents has to be negative, which will mean I got the direction wrong and it's actually pointed the other way. It'll still be fine. And that's one equation um, from my junction. If you look at this other side, you'll see that equation actually turns out to be the same. You have current going in as I1 plus I2 plus I3 equals current going out, which is zero. I'm not going to write it down again because it's the same equation. And we can get two more equations from our loop laws. So we're going to look at loop number one. In loop number one, we're just going to pick a point to start. I'm going to choose um, right here on this upper left-hand corner. As I go through, we get to this resistor. At that resistor, we are going to drop um, potential over that resistor because we're going in the same direction as current. So the potential drop over there is IR, which is Ohm's law. The I is I3 because we're looking at a region in I3. And the resistance is 5. So I3 times 5. Keep going around the loop. And we get to a 2 ohm resistor. Now, as we go through the loop with this 2 ohm resistor, we're going backwards through that resistor because the current is headed to the right and we're going to the left. So instead of subtracting the voltage there, we're going to add it. We're going up in potential as we go backwards across the resistor. And that potential is still I times R. The I is I1 and the R is 2. And then we'll go all the way to the battery. The battery, we're going to go through backwards because this is the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So over the course of that battery, we're going to lose 5 volts of potential. Get back to the corner where we started. So the total over the whole loop has to be 0. We follow the same process for loop number 2. We're going to choose an arbitrary place to start. I'm going to choose up here in the upper left-hand corner. Go across to the 2 ohm resistor. We're going the same direction as current. So we're going to lose voltage, um, which is I1 times 2. Keep going around the circuit. Get to the battery. We're going through it the correct direction this time. So that's going to add up to 10 volts. Keep going around the circuit. Back to where we started. So that has to equal 0. Now what we have here is a system of equations. We're looking for three different currents, I1, I2, and I3, and we've got three different equations. The number of currents that you're having to solve for should be equal to the number of equations you have. So we're going to have to solve that algebraically for I1, I2, and I3. Luckily, I1 is really easy to solve for right there. You change that around to be 10 equals I1 times 2. Divide by 2 on each side. You get that I1 equals 5 amps. And now we can use that information in our other equations. Like we'll plug in um, 5 for I1 right there in this equation. Which will leave us with 
I1 times 2, which is 5 times 2, so that'll be 10 minus 5 equals, I'm going to go ahead and move that to the other side, equals 5I3. 10 minus 5 is 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. Therefore, I3 equals 1 amp. And we know over here, we can plug those things in. 0 equals I1, which is uh, 5 amps, plus I2, plus I3, which is 1 amp. So 0 equals 5 plus something plus 1. If you algebraically manipulate that, you'll get that I2 equals negative 6 amps, which means we got the direction for I2 backwards. So we're going to take that and go look at it in the circuit. I2 is going backwards, so we're going to erase those little arrows and turn that current around so that you get current going this direction. And we know it had a magnitude, I2, of 6 amps. 6 amps for I2. I1 was 5 amps. And I3 was 1 amp. So you found all of the currents through each of those resistors. You can use current times resistance to find the voltage across each one. You can use uh, power equals I times V to find the power of each one, um, which is pretty easy. But with two batteries like this, you do not find the equivalent resistance of that circuit because the batteries in there messes it all up and it doesn't work exactly the same. So you got to use Kirchhoff laws for those.